In today's video, we're talking with Dylan Thomas about why you're not able to keep everything that you find as a buy and hold investor. It's going direct to seller and well, you're gonna see what he ended up deciding to do. A little bit of a spoiler, did make him an extra 30 grand. Let's dive in. So you bought two triplexes yeah. and uh, what market? Uh, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Okay, cool. Yeah. So closed on two triplexes, you're doing direct to seller marketing mm -hmm. and you got another deal. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you keep it? You can't keep them all. Uh, so after the two triplexes were done, I was strapped for cash. Um, okay. I had just gotten married uh, and my wife was like, yo, where's all our money? <laughs> uh, so I'm sure people can relate to that, but yeah. Uh, so I was like, well, it was a single family. Uh, it had a big ARV. I got it for a really good price. So I was like, well, I should take the cash and kind of run. So yeah, yeah. I wholesaled it. Um, kind of turned into an absolutely crazy story. Um, Let's hear it. <clears throat> all right. So what happened was I got it under contract for $92,000. Um, I, I had originally bid eighty two. dollars um, Another wholesaler came in and bid eighty five, dollars So he beat me. I had built really good rapport though, so I told the guy like, hey, give me a courtesy phone call and I'll see if I can beat it. So the seller calls me back and says, hey, you got beat, it's, you got beat, it's 85,000. And I said, hey man, if I gave you 92 right now, would you just sign? So I gave him $7,000 more and he's like, yeah, I would sign right now. Boom, signed it. I knew the ARV was like 215, 220,000, needed about 30,000 in repair. So I'm like, man, this is a fat deal. Yeah. This is gonna be great. So I sent it out to two buyers um, and the one literally signed a contract like within an hour. They're like, we want it done. So I assigned it to them or I signed it to them for 122,000. Okay. So I was like looking good. I was like, man, this is gonna be a great like $30,000 profit. It came back that the septic failed inspection. So, Ouch. yeah. And the problem with that county is it doesn't perk. So we have to build an eight foot sand mound which would have been about like 18,000 bucks. So like super ouch. So what ended up happening was I went, that, that buyer backed out. I went back to my seller and I said, hey man, it's gonna be $18,000 price reduction. You know what? Give me $10,000 off and we'll still do the deal. So I, I originally bid 82,000, I okay. went to 92. So I got it back to my 82 number. Okay. So now I have no buyer though. Yeah. So I'm like, oh shoot, this is like my first wholesale deal ever. I don't have any buyers. I don't know what I'm doing really. So I'm like, hit up this guy, hit up. He's a big realtor, flips a bunch of houses. So I hit him up. Was this the second buyer? The second buyer okay. now, yeah. So I hit the second buyer up and I said, hey man, I've got this deal. Here's the address. And he goes, oh, I bid 85,000 on that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, well, he doesn't want it. So, you know, I just set my phone to the side because I texted him and he texted me back, I'll buy it. I'm like, okay. He goes, I'll give you a hundred thousand. And I'm like, no, because I sent it to him for a hundred and twenty or a hundred, yeah, 120,000. Okay. And I was like, no, no, you don't, you know. So I didn't even answer. He texted me five minutes later, yo, I'll give you 105 for it. And I again said, no, I don't know. So then he says, yo, I'll give you 110 for it. I said, no, you meet me at 115, you got a deal. So he says, okay, deal. So he signs that he never even walked the property because he had already been in the property. I had texted him and said it failed inspection on the septic. I still don't know if he actually read that text message because he never said anything about it. So I'm kind of expecting to get a text within the next few months. I said, Hey man, what's up with the septic? But I have a screenshot that says I told him, you know, so yeah. kind of like a little sketchy situation, but it ended up working out like really well, really smooth. Um, I made 30, I made 33 on the deal. I double closed it. So I made 30 at the end of the day, awesome. but it was one, it was one of those points in my life where I wasn't strapped for cash, but I my, I'm not blaming my wife. I love her to death, but she was like, Hey, can we not take any more money out of our bank account to fund yeah. your endeavors? So, and I was like, totally respected that. So I was like, yeah, honey, I'm going to sell this one for How long sure. you guys been married? Uh, <laughs> seven months. So in seven months, you bought two, two triplexes? Um, I bought one, actually, yeah. So the first triplex I ever bought was in January. Okay. And then we got married in June, and then in September, I bought my second triplex. Got it. Yeah. So yeah, I don't, I don't blame her. No, I don't blame her either. She's a saint for letting me do all of this anyways, you know? Um, yeah. She believes in me, which is awesome, and that's all I could really ask for in a partner. Like, she's, 
absolutely amazing. So when she saw that money coming back in, though, it definitely made her feel like way better. Like, yeah, okay, this like, is legit. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. He doesn't just spend it. Yeah, he can yeah. also bring it back in. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, that's it. I think as investors, a lot of the times we'll make money and not take it home to our families. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's super Well, don't get important. me wrong. I haven't taken it home yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, I left it in the business. Got I told it. her I was going to, but, you know, again, things are tight. Okay. <laughs> so I've left it in the business. So snowboarding. Yeah. How did you end up deciding you wanted to do it? Yeah. But you said you were ranked 28 in the world. Yeah. That's a yeah. pretty cool accomplishment. Yeah. Um, <laughs> At, from like seven to about 13, I just did it f- for fun, you know, uh, 15, 10, 15 days a year, just for fun. Around the age of like f- 14, 15, there was a little contest series that started and I would start doing a few contests. Um, and then at 17 and 18, um, I'll give him a plug, uh, a guy by the name of Pat, Pat Morgan. He started this Eastern Snowboard League, which yeah. was like revolutionary at the time. Um, and it, I won the league both times. And what that did was that gave me a free trip to Colorado in the summer. And in Colorado, there's a camp called Woodward at Copper and they push all their snow together and hold snow all summer. And we would snowboard all summer. And uh, it's like a gymnastics center and all that. So really cool. Um, so then at 18 years old, um, I had the choice. Do I go to school? Uh, and I could have I, I could have played baseball or soccer in school. And I chose, no, I'm forget school. I don't like it. I don't enjoy it. Um, Hello. Yeah, <laughs> I don't really enjoy it that much. Um, now, if my mom's watching this, she was pushing me really hard to school yeah. in a nice way, obviously. Sure. Like, yeah, she just wanted me to get a great education, um, but I, I, I just didn't know what I wanted to get. And I didn't want to be one of the kids that, to go in there and spend eight years of my life, you know, trying to figure out what the heck am I going to do. To and, get a master's yeah. in art theory yeah. or some <laughs> yeah. fluff Something ridiculous. Degree. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, all right, I'm just going to go snowboard. I'm going to go figure this out. So I moved to Breckenridge, Colorado at the age of 18 uh, and just figured it out. Found the lease, you know, got myself a little one bedroom apartment and just started snowboarding. Um, So I would snowboard like 180, 200 days a year. And then I would come back. What did you do for work? I I wouldn't work. I would just straight snowboard. Um, So what I did was in the summertime, I would come back to Pennsylvania and I would work in the natural gas and oil industry. So I would do concrete and epoxy grout all over the United States, um, just chasing the pipelines. And I would make a bunch of money, save all my money, and then blow it all in the winter on snowboarding. (laughs) So I did that uh, for a bunch of years uh, from, let's say 2014 to 2019, or 18, 2018, I did that. Um, I mean, absolute blast. I, I got the opportunity to travel the world uh, with the U.S. team a little bit. Um, we, we, I was in the U.S. Uh, team selection events for the Olympics in 2018, which was super fun. But it was crazy, like this kid coming from Pennsylvania, like we don't really have mountains. We have like hills. Yeah. Um, and I'd never snowboarded much before. Like I'd snowboarded 10, 15, 20 days a year. And all these kids that were my same age were snowboarding 200, year, 200 days a year. And so I felt like I was always one step behind. I felt like I was always one step behind them. And it was a mental thing. It was, I, I kind of let myself make an excuse that, hey, these kids are better than me. Hey, these kids have more reps than me. Hey, these, and I, I, I should be where I'm at. Like I'm okay being where I'm at. So it was, it was a huge mental hurdle. And I see this happening now in real estate too, of like, oh man, well, Ryan over here, he's doing 200 deals a year. <laughs> you know, like I'm only doing one, but like, I guess the moral of the story is like, if you don't put in the work, you're never going to get to your level or you're never going to get to your, your mentor's level, you know? And, well, I'm not doing 200 deals a year. So that okay. should make you feel well, better. Well, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> that, uh, have you read Becoming Superman? No, I have not. It's, it's an interesting book that okay. kind of is along the same lines of what you're talking about, where it used to take so long for professional athletes and rock climbers to gain like mastery because they had day jobs and Mm -hmm. families Mm -hmm. and commitments. And the point of the book was in the seventies or eighties, people started literally camping in like Yosemite so they could climb. Yeah. And people started, you know, working on the, working at the ski resorts. Yeah. So that way they could ski full time. Yeah. So it's just kind of interesting, kind of goes along that same line of your rapid acceleration in the sport. Yeah. Like I said, in 2018, I was 
in the five Olympic selection events for the U.S. team. I took third in one of them. Um, and out of, we had 14 people trying to make the Olympics. I was number six or seven, and we sent four people. Okay. So I was in the running. Like, that was awesome. It was a great part of my life. At the same time, the injuries started coming. Okay. Um, I heard he needed disc in my back. And just it, that whole year was just an injury riddle year. I met my wife at that time. We started dating, and it was pretty easy decision just to rip the Band-Aid and, and figure out what was next. Okay. So what was next for me was all I knew was the gas industry. So I started, I just went full time and I was just stacking cash. No idea what I wanted to do. I had no direction. I just knew I wanted to work really hard, make a lot of money and figure something out. So I stumbled upon bigger pockets somehow. Like we probably all have. Yeah, yeah we all have. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I stumbled, I, it was probably on a drive. I just searched like real estate or something. I don't even know why. And I stumbled upon bigger pockets and I started listening to Beardy, Brandon and, and, and all those guys talk on their podcast. And I'm like, this sounds, this sounds cool. This sounds really cool. So I dove into the forums, read all the books, did all that. And, uh, in January of 2019, after about five, six months of looking on the MLS, I found a three unit. Obviously it was overpriced because it was on the MLS mm -hmm. and I made the shrewd financial decision to purchase it. Yeah. <laughs> so I sunk about 45, 50,000 into that building. Yeah. By the time I got done my 20% down and rehab and all that, spent 28 days of my life straight rehabbing the building with my parents. They were, I mean, shout out to them. That's cool. Huge, That's yeah, huge saints on that. They helped me so much and we were able to do it cheap, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I renovated that whole thing in January, got it fully rented, and it's a great stabilized asset that makes me uh, 800 bucks a month nice. after everything. So yeah, great asset. But I got thinking, I'm like, how many more of these can I do? Yeah. Like, there's got to be a better way. So I guess if we rewind a little bit farther, um, before, before I bought that building, I listened to one of your podcasts on Bigger Pockets. Okay. And I did what everyone does, follow you on Instagram. So then I bought that triplex and then I started looking for more and there wasn't any deals. Yeah. So then you were like, I think it was kind of when you were starting to advertise CCF a little bit. Okay. And you were like, I'm the direct to seller guy. And I'm like, all right, how do we do that? So I bought, I love that my branding works. <laughs> <laughs> so I bought a uh, hundred letters at uh, Walmart. Okay. And over Christmas, I wasn't working because it was Christmas time. And I sat down in my fiance's uh, parents' uh, kitchen and I just wrote letters. I just went on county record and I was like, oh, this house looks interesting, whatever. And I just wrote a letter to him. And I got two responses. One of them was a three unit and one of them was a duplex. I made offers on both of them. Uh, the three unit I ended up getting not eight months later it took eight months of back and forth between me and the seller to actually buy the property and then the two unit i got outbid by my property manager actually mm -hmm. so which I, we, we didn't know each other at the time okay. uh, but now that we like now that i work with him it was just like kind of like eh, whatever he could pay more it was yeah. it was fine one of his Did you get guys. a better deal on the second triplex uh way better deal yeah so i paid 187 for the first triplex on the mls and the second triplex i paid 150. Nice. Yeah. And what I did was I actually, I, I knew it would appraise for 187. So I knew I could pay 150 and be able to like pretty much burr out of it. So the bank gave me an appraisal of 188, which they gave me 150,000 and 400 dollars. So at closing, I think I brought like 5,000 bucks for closing costs and stuff. Yeah. So I was like, the first time I dropped 40, 43,000 for closing. And yeah. I was like, this is way better. That's awesome. But then the rehab comes and you know, so yeah. I'm, I, but I knew there had to be a better way because I couldn't sit down and write 80 letters a day. Like I knew there was something better. So then I just kept following you. I saw you post something about CCF and I was like, I got to figure out what the heck this is about. Cool. And yeah. So then I joined. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So folks that are watching this yeah. that want to connect with you, maybe they've got a deal they want to bring you, something like that. What's yeah. the best way for them to reach out to you? Uh, probably on Instagram. Yeah, my, my name is Dylan Thomas uh, one five. Okay. Uh, so that's D Y L A N T H O M A S one five. Um, I'm not as active as I should be. If you go on there, it's going to be a lot of snowboarding posts. Okay. Uh, that is me actually. Um, but yeah, that's I, I just have it or Facebook. Uh, it's Dylan Thomas on Facebook as well. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Hopefully you found, hopefully you got something out of it. <laughs>
could just use it. I mean, you could. That's actually kind of funny. 